back around again already to a uh, another midweek uh, teaching. Time is flying, isn't it? I believe the Lord's cutting everything short in these days. So, we're in, in Exodus today. We're going to be in the uh, Old Testament. And we're going we're gonna to find encouragement and joy and peace and blessing in the Old Testament. We know the Old Testament is good for reference. It's a good reference uh, testament. But it is old. It's not new. It's old. And that's what we want, isn't it? We, we, we want the new. But we can still get good reference in the old as the new concealed and the new as the old revealed, as it is said. So uh, let's go into Exodus chapter 3 today. And we're going to start reading in verse 1. Exodus. Exodus 3. Verse 1. So when the Lord saw, oh sorry, now now Moses, <laughs> now Moses when tending the flock of Jethro. So Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, and God called him God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Verse 6, moreover, he said, I am the Lord, I am the God of your uh, father, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I came down to deliver them. I came down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land and to bring them up from the land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, we're in verse 10, Exodus 3. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, 
the children of Israel out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So he said, I will certainly be with you and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, What, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And our final verse is 14, and it says, And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Well, there it is. There's no reverend Dr. Fathers there, is there? There's no great swelling titles. I am. Just tell them I am. I am has sent you, has sent me. And let me say this, when I am send you, it's all over by the shouting. You're not waiting around for the fat lady to sing, I tell you. <laughs> when the Lord says something, that's it. You know, uh, these days, it's hard to find... Um, a place where the truth is uh, spoken and is, a place where Jesus is, a church where Jesus uh, is operating these days, a lot of churches around. Um, our primary verse today is Exodus 3, 5. Then he said, Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. The right? place where you stand is holy ground. The I am was there. Jesus. <laughs> the truth. Right? We, we see the confirmation here with the fire, the... The I am, right? and um, holy ground. Those three go together. The word is a fire and a hammer. The word of God. So, uh, title of a message today is hard to find. Hard to find. Hard to find preachers preaching the truth today. Hard to find people who uh, who believe the I am or, and believe the messenger of the I am. As Moses said, who am I going to say uh, uh, sent me? He said, just tell him I am sent you. Well, what I find today... Uh, is that um, we've got a lot of common ground, not holy ground. And uh, there was uh, some time back a, uh, there was a guy teaching, uh, I think in the Toowoomba district, on the subject of common ground. And what he said was uh, that we needed um, common ground among the churchgoers, no matter what the denomination, no matter what the belief. 
this it, it smells like Rick Warren, didn't it? The ecumenical. The ecumenical ground can't help you. It's not pure soil. It's not holy ground. Ecumenical. One world church. Emergent church. Emergent church ground. We need that beautiful holy ground where the truth is spoken, where the I am is ministering through a chosen vessel. Okay. Um, common ground, you know, it, it, it's the usual Queen's Christmas address sort of thing. Uh, there was one guy, uh, Dean Randerson, from the Anglican. Uh, Church said in the New Zealand Herald, uh, common ground. He wrote about common ground where faiths, F A I T H S, where faiths meet. Common ground where faiths meet. So all doctrines meet there. No, they don't. Not not the doctrine of the Christ. Common ground where faiths meet. We have to stay clear of this mixture. The devil is very subtle, isn't he? And he'll come in with that mix. The old devil will come in with that mix. Once again, started it in, in the Garden of Eden, didn't it? Devil saying to Eve, you can mix. You can mix what I said with what you already believe. And uh, usually it's only, a, it's, a, it's the old toehold it's the old hoof of, of the camel in the tent, isn't it? And uh, then he takes over, or more biblical, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Hey? the true ministers will stand up and speak against this. Once saved, always saved. It's in there to the top of the list. No need for repentance and go on in your sin. It's all good. Saved by grace alone or saved by faith alone. Or... No. no, Jesus opened the door at the tree. Now we have to cooperate. Just like the great commission. Why would it be a commission? If God's doing it all, wouldn't it just be the great mission? <laughs> Not the commission. What have we got to do if God doesn't need us, does he? This is in accordance to once saved, always saved. I'm speaking on this commission and mission. No, it's a co-mission. We're in this together with the Lord. Hey? Everyone's finding, trying to find a common ground. Hey? Everyone's going to save the world together. We are the world, we are the people. Dear me. Hey? We are the world, we are the people. The Lord Jesus uh, makes it very clear to us, doesn't he? He's the one sending, he's the one saving, he's the one 
who's laid down the rules and he's the one that is going to give the crown if we complete the race. If we complete the race. We even had uh, Bono from that rock group, U2. He was out there, one part of it, trying to find common ground and save the world and bring everyone together. And It can't be done. You, you, you can't. It can't be done. It, it, and if it's supposedly done, it's not genuine. It would be fabricated, false, superficial... Because scripture says so. We only got to look at the scriptures, haven't we? There's only one platform and uh, there's only one rock on which we all stand. And then we'll be in one accord and then we will be in unity, perfect, pure um, fellowship, and that's on the Word, on the I Am, on Jesus. That's when the fire will be burning in our hearts, as it was with the disciples when Jesus was speaking on the road, to Emmaus, and he was unraveling the scriptures and expounding upon the scriptures, and their hearts were burning. They were having an, an I am moment. They were having a I am time. But the great I am. It's amazing. Here they walking with Jesus there, and he's the same one that was speaking to Moses. Hey, and was ministering to Moses in the backside of the desert. Exodus three, seven. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. You see that? Isn't that beautiful? There's all this stuff going on there in Egypt and, and all the wickedness. And the Lord can hear it all. Hey? The Lord ain't deaf. The wonderful Jesus is not deaf. He heard, all, heard it all. He heard everything said. He heard all the cursing of the hard taskmasters. Hey? And the Lord knows our sorrows. No one else. No one else. We can be so glad and 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 so uh, assured that the Lord knows every single thing. That's why we must walk circumspect before the Lord. Okay. We must walk before the Lord, reverence before the Lord, then he, we have no bother that he is not with us. He is with us. I am with thee. Lo, I am with thee always to the end of the age. Matthew 28. 20, lo, I am with thee. It doesn't matter if you don't have the reverence certificate, you don't have the acceptance 
of the Egyptian churches. <laughs> it doesn't matter. All you need to know, and all I need to know, honestly and truly, in your innermost being, heart of hearts, be honest with yourself. Did Jesus send you? Hey? Did Jesus send you? Because if he did, there ain't no one going to stop you. They can do what they want to do. Let them do it. It'll be all part and parcel with the outcome and the blessing and the double blessing. Hey? As we looked at Job last Sunday, my servant Job, hey, he was faithful to the end. Hallelujah. Well, he knew God, knew him. While we're there, just mentioning Job, can we just go to the writings of Job for a minute? Something... I want to read there in Job chapter 19. We can go there, verse 23. Oh, that my words were written, oh, that they were inscribed in a book, that they were engraved on a rock with an iron pen and lead forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth, and after my skin is destroyed. This I know, that in my flesh I shall see God, <laughs> whom I shall see for myself and not another. How my heart yearns within me, if you should say, how shall we persecute him? Since the root of the matter is found in me. Be afraid of the sword for yourself. For wrath brings the punishment of the sword. That you may know there is a judgment. Hey? He had the root of the matter in him. That's all you need. All you need is the root of the matter. The whole matter, you know, the matter as in the, the matter of life, the everything. The contents of the earth, the contents of a human, the makeup and, 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 and the biological, the... the physical, the everything, the mental, the mind, the brain, the, the matter, the root of it all is the root of the stem of Jesse. Hey? The root of the stem of Jesse. That's all we need. I, I, I forever, in the last 31 years, next month, drawing nigh, 15 days, isn't it? What is it? few weeks, 31 years, I've always aimed at exalting the I am, lifting him up, glorifying him, putting him on more than a pedestal, but his throne, so to speak, exalting him in his rightful position as king of kings. Hey. As I mentioned last Sunday, that we have a shepherd who's a king. Kings are not without. They usually talk about on the documentaries and everything like that, but the poor old shepherd down in the valley, 
But our shepherd is the king of kings. <laughs> hey? King of kings. Lord of lords. It's hard to find. It's hard to find where Jesus is exalted in the local church, well and truly, above money, above tithing, above soul winning, above uh, building buildings, above um, networking, above getting the get gospel. It's hard to find. The title of our message today, hard to find. A local church where Jesus is operating and they're all looking for the big bang, aren't they? They're all looking for the big noise. Everyone's looking for the excitement and the jumping up in the hoopla and the, and the, uh, the healing and this and the that. And this is the way the devil's going to deceive many in the last days. Right? Says that in, in Thessalonians, doesn't it? We just go over to Thessalonians and we'll have a look there. Thessalonians. This old Bible of mine. Hey? Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. And uh, very clear in, in verse. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And. The verse is 8. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth, destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. You see that? That is very, very beautiful, isn't it? And the lawless, lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness. You, you see how he consumes him and you see how he destroys him? Eh? With his mouth <laughs> and the brightness of his coming. Glory, hallelujah, how great thou art. I mean, this is I am material, isn't it? This is burning bush stuff. Huh? This is the word for you. This is our wonderful Jesus. Hard to find, hard to find. Everyone's looking for the lying signs and wonders. Everyone's looking for something to tickle their ears and tickle their fancy and... Everyone's looking for something to, you know, uh, excite the flesh and the emotions. But how many are looking for the bona fide truth? How many are prepared to, to say to the minister, who sent you? What Bible college sent you? <laughs> hey? What Egyptian college sent you? I can gladly say and proudly say, I am sent me. The last 31 years has been, I tell you, uh, a fiery uh, experience. A fiery experience indeed. No man, no college. No millionaire, no nothing sent me, only Jesus. Uneducated and untrained. Must have been with Jesus. I wrote a book. I published a book 
going back 1997. It was called, and it is called, Discerning the Times. And around pages 14 to 17 in that little book, I speak on common ground, and that was in 1997. Now, you go back and uh, subtract that from 2018 and see what you get. So, going back over time, we see that common ground is very common now and, and, and has been, especially after I penned this book. It was very noticeable. And I've said in that book, in pages 14 to 17, that common ground is a new age term. Well, we know it's not a biblical term, don't we? Common ground is a new age term that is used instead of the word compromise. Compromise. And we know there was a compromising church in the book of Revelation. Eh? The compromising church was the church at Pergamon. And uh, they had issues with, with doctrine. And uh, Jesus said to the church, if you want to go to Revelation chapter 2, and... Uh, Verse 14, it says, But I have a few things against you, because you have there at your church those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. Thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against you with the sword of my mouth. Oh, he's going to devour the lawless one with his mouth, isn't he? And now he's going to... It says he's going to fight against them with the sword of his mouth. Now, for the last 31 years next month, I've been used of the Lord to fight against compromising churches. as a mouthpiece to fight against compromising churches with their common ground garbage, except in all beliefs and tr um, uh, doctrines and all kinds of um, hollow balloon, all kinds of rubbish. They allow in the door for the sake of numbers and, 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 as they call it these days, growing their church. Dear, oh dear. It is their church. They are growing their church, but Jesus is not there. Hard to find a place where the truth is, where, where Jesus is, where the fire of God is. Not Hollywood, not Hollywood uh, fire, holy fire. Holy fire will will deal with the individual. Take the sandals 
off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Where can you find those places of respect, where people go to the local church and they have respect for God and the minister and the message? Those three. Where can we find a place like that? That go to a local church on Sunday and in each individual's heart that goes to that local church, for them, it's all about God, the minister and the message. It's hard to find. In these went on days, hard to find. Uh, this common ground, this compromise, the devil's work, part of his end time love doctrine card. Hey? We've got all race cards, they play race cards, they play. Uh, they bring out the race card or the, they bring out the homophobic card and they bring out the love card, <laughs> pending what's going down to wrestle and fight their way out of uh, the reality of the conviction of the truth. Hey? It's hard to find a church today or churches. People tell me all the time on the street, where's the truth? And a lot of the time I ask myself, I wonder if they really are looking for the, the I am truth. If they're really looking for the bona fide, or they're looking for the truth according to their lifestyle. So the common ground is basically the compromise, isn't it? And as people of God, we, we don't and we can't afford to compromise. There's a little leaven leavens the whole lump. But the doctrine of Balaam, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, we know uh, there's a doctrinal problem with the compromises, the compromising churches, those looking for common ground. Okay? Common ground is not holy ground. Because God is not considered common, or his word, or his way. It's not common. It's rare. It's unique. It's narrow. It's difficult. And when you see all these mega churches, you, you have to ask yourself, is the doctrine of Jesus really there? Is Jesus really there? Come and see what the Lord has done. And they've got a building built. And it's all freshly painted and all the gardens are weeded. And come and see what the Lord has done. But the Lord didn't do that at all because we don't find the Lord building buildings in the New Testament. We don't find Jesus building a building and he was a carpenter or Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Peter, Paul, Jude or anyone else. We just don't find that in, in, in the apostolic walk, do we? Because they were pilgrims and sojourners passing through. Pilgrims and sojourners passing through don't dig in and build buildings because they're pilgrims and sojourners passing through. Well, 
the common denominator in the false church and false churches is common ground. Common ground, I said in my book, Discerning the Times, is a denial of Christ's word. These people have, these churches have an appearance of godliness, but they deny the power. The power of the word. They deny the I am, they deny Jesus. They have an appearance of godliness, but they deny the power. The Christ, the anointed. The anointed one. The Christ. And we don't fellowship with people who deny the Christ, deny his doctrine. We go to Revelation uh, Revelation 3 and there was a faithful church. And uh, it says in Revelation 3, 8, I know your works. This is the church at Philadelphia. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it, for you have a little strength, have kept my word and have not denied my name. Amen. You have not denied my name. But they, these compromising churches with the common ground and and let's get together. Come on, come on, let's get together. You know, um, they deny. They deny the Lord's name. If there's one thing that God hates, as he says in Revelation 2, 15, that you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. I hate, strong word, isn't it? Hate. He hates anything that conflicts with his doctrine. The Lord puts his word above his name. Eh? Common ground is the denial of the Christ's word. It says we can sort out our problems without offending or hurting anyone and then depart from each other as friends and happy. But never mind if you offend Jesus. Eh? It doesn't matter if people offend Jesus these days. They don't care about Jesus. If we go over to the writings of uh, to John, not too far from the book of Revelation, uh, to John, verse 9, whoever transgresses does not abide in the doctrine of the Christ, does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of the Christ has Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him into your house, nor greet him, for he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. Hey, what do you think of that? You see how important doctrine is. It's been brushed over. It, it, it's been pushed aside for, for decades. Everyone's, you know, too busy wanting to have fun and make church 
fun. Huh? It, it, it's damnable. We're not even to uh, greet or eat. For he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. That's what the Lord calls other doctrines. And those who partake of them, he calls it evil. It's an evil deed they're doing. The Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, Roman Catholics, Episcopal, Independent Fundamental Baptists, Fundamental Baptists, Baptists, Hillsong, Assembly of God, Australian Christian churches. Have a look at their doctrine. Have a look at it, each individual assembly of God and ask yourself, is what they're teaching the doctrine of Jesus? Now, if it is the doctrine of Jesus, why would they be under that heading of assembly of God? It's the old story. Why would people like Pillar Baptist Church rage against other Baptist churches and still call themselves Baptists? There's a dishonesty and a deceitfulness there that they're riding on the bandwagon that the religion, the Baptist church religion, has built up a certain name and, and uh, audience and they're going to ride on that name, yet they say they bring another doctrine. They say that they're out and about and they're doing Father's will and you don't have to repent and you don't have to uh, obey. So whatever way we go, there's all this compromise in there. There's See, Pillar Baptist Church, if they were genuine, truly genuine, even to what they believe, which is not the truth, they wouldn't say Pillar Baptist Church, they would say Pillar Church. They would, they would call themselves Pillar Church. I'm just using a, an example in the district. They would call themselves Pillar Church. See, we, as a fellowship, we call ourselves Jesus the Christ Ministry. It's his ministry. My name's not up there in lights, and no denominational name is up there in lights. It's Jesus' name. <laughs> It's his ministry. I'm part of his ministry. He's not part of my ministry and my ambition and my whatever. As many people have said to me over the last 31 years, you should go to America and, and preach in, the, in America and you become big. You got the goods. I said, look, that's what people do. Right? They go here, they go there. They want, to, they, they want to become big. They want to be someone and they want to be with the big uh, charlatans and all the rest of it. But not for me. Because I know if, if I was to go and do what I want to do, it's never going to work. I'm never going to have what I have now. And what I got now is not worth anything of the world or men or fame or fortune. Because what I have is beautiful. <laughs> what I have is a beautiful thing going with Jesus and Father and the Holy Ghost. I'm going to keep it like that. It doesn't matter if no one knows who I am or no one accepts me or respects me. or It doesn't matter. That doesn't exist. I'm over that 
decades ago. And doesn't bother to me if the most idiotic, broken down, sinful, deceitful, lying, cheating person in town doesn't accept me or continues to mock me and slight me. That doesn't matter. That's all been dealt with decades ago. <laughs> uh, I tell you, um, it's hard to find. It's hard to find. Hard to find people who want to do uh, Father's will. Hey? You see, nothing's clearer to me than uh, that God can hear, that he ain't deaf. God can see, he ain't blind. Hey? And God still speaks to those who have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My Jesus has set me free. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My Jesus has set me free. Walking in the light of his word Day after day Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah My Jesus has set me free Common Graham Yeah, in that, uh, I published that book in 1997 And uh registered with the Australian Library. Um, common Ground, uh, yeah, as I said, it, it says we can sort out our problems without offending and hurting anyone and we can depart as friends and happy. And, but in so doing that, uh, we usually, if not all the time, we offend the Lord. We have to talk the Lord down in order to please men and women. Eh? Common ground basically wants no conflict, does it? That's the coward ice of man and woman. Common ground wants no conflict. and uh, But Yahweh is Lord of a warring people. We're a warring people, we're soldiers and we're in the Lord's army and we will return to the plain of Megiddo and we will fight the battle of battles and the fight of fights and destroy evil with Jesus and the angels, as it says in the book of Revelation, the angels and the saints. Hey. The angels and the saints will come uh, and gather on the plain of Megiddo. And um, it's in Revelation 19, verse 11. Then I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horn. He who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. The armies in heaven were clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed by followed and followed him 
on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Home. How beautiful is that? <laughs> and the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Oh, glory, glory, glory. The saints, the angels. We will fight with him. We will win. We will be victorious in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Christ. We have it in the bag. We got so much to look forward to. Why compromise? Why bother compromising and trying to find common ground? You see, we don't uh, try and find common ground. The saints don't try to find. If you want to use that that uh, word in common ground. Okay, let's just use that for a minute. Uh, saints don't try to find common ground. Uh, they find common ground with saints. Saints with saints, sinners with sinners. That's it. They're, it will be no other way. <laughs> false prophets for false people. False gods for false people. False pastors for false people. Now, if you can identify a pastor and you see that he's false, and he's got his little piece of paper, calling himself Reverend Dr. Father or Right Reverend Bishop Curry or whatever, and they're going into bat for the Sodomites, and they're lying through their teeth to billions of people at royal weddings saying God's love is unconditional. Well, you better go and read John chapter 14, verses 21 to 24, and then come back and tell me God's love is unconditional. And then go and read the book of Revelation, where it said to his churches, seven of them, unconditional love, repent, 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 except for two, five churches. Repent, repent, repent. Is that unconditional? Sounds like a condition to me. But common ground prevails, doesn't it, with amongst the Egyptians? Amongst the Egyptians. And God can hear. God can hear their compromise. God can hear their lying doctrines. And they're going to come. Many are going to come. And they're going to say... Lord, Lord, and he's going to say, go away from me. Admittance rejected. You lover of sin. I don't believe there's a greater sin than false doctrine. I really don't believe there is. That you could offend God more. I reckon it's running a close second to blaspheming the Holy Spirit. 
It might even be a branch of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit only ever promotes Jesus and, and what he says. So it could very well be inclusive with blaspheming the Holy Spirit. False doctrine makes God wrath. He hates it. Hey? He hates it. Glory to the Lamb of God. who come to take away the sin of the world and have mercy on us. I'm just going to zip back to the compromising church for a minute. And uh, verse 16, Revelation 2, Repent or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. You imagine, <laughs> I tell you what, can you imagine Jesus fighting against a human? I tell you what, it would rock the socks off him, wouldn't it? That's what happens when, when I go and minister and give literature and the truth to church leaders and people. Uh, call themselves of the church, they get wrath. They just rage. Hey? You think about it. I will fight against you with the sword of my mouth. The word. The word. And the the compromising churches are so blinded and the lukewarm churches are so blinded. They don't believe Jesus fights against their false ways. With the word, not fisticuffs, the word. The sword of the spirit, the word of God. Alive and living and sharper than any two-edged sword, severing the bone from marrow gel, soul from spirit, discerning the thoughts and intents of the heart. Common ground wants no conflict. Common ground wants no battle. Everyone wants to go to heaven, but they don't want to fight the fight. Hey? There's, a, there's a battle going on. <laughs> it's for your soul. Huh? Why would there be a fight? If it was once saved, always say, what's the fighting about? I fought the fight. I kept the faith. I ran the race. That scripture alone of Paul smashes once saved, always saved, just belts it out of the ballpark to infinity. I ran the race. I fought the fight and I kept the faith. What would you have to do that for? If it's all done and dusted in a, I believe, do you believe Jesus? Oh, I believe. I believe. Knock, knock, knock. On the door. Knock, knock, knock. Hello. I just dropped by to ask if you believe in Jesus because I'm a soul winner. Do you believe? Oh, yeah, I believe. Okay, you're saved. Write it up in the book, Bill. Okay, Jack. Another one, one for the kingdom, because he said, I believe. I ran the race. I kept the faith. Paul kept the faith. Writer of the lion's share of the New Testament, he kept the faith. And he related those three things to the crown of life. Now there's a crown laid up for me. Huh? Now there's a crown laid up for me. Common ground wants no conflict, no battle, no hardship. Okay? 
and there's that gospel going around, you know, the easy way to heaven. That's IFWB, Independent Fundamental, IF, uh, IFB, C, Independent Fundamental Baptist Churches. They, they proclaim this easy way to heaven. <laughs> Ain't no easy way to heaven, I can tell you now. You just look at any single apostolic man. Ain't no easy way to heaven. I can tell you. Common ground don't want no hardship. It don't want no enemies. See, all this is ecumenical. No conflict, no battle, no hardship, no enemies. Right? How can you have Jesus and no enemies? Jesus said you'll be hated by all. You'll be hated by all sinners. You won't, you won't be hated by saints. Saints don't hate saints. Saints love saints. Eh? Saints even love their enemies. Common ground wants no conflict, no battle, no hardship, no enemies and no rejection. Eh? That's a, a terrible problem of the human race. Or oh, they hate rejection. I can't handle rejection. I've had people say to me, I'd love to go out in the street and do what you're doing, but I'm frightened of being rejected. I wouldn't be able to handle it. Well, you're not dead, are you? You, you haven't died in, in, in Christ. We need to give up our life. That's death, giving up your life. <laughs> and you won't bother. People reject you, hate you, bash you, kick you, set you on fire, stone you, poison you with food poisoning, you have a heart attack. You, you won't bother about that because you know God hears. You know the I am hears. You, you know he hears your cry. And I don't care what it is. I don't care who's listening to this message today. He hears your cry. No one heard my cry 31 years ago, no one. No human heard my cry because it was deep, deep, deep within. And I was crying out. I, I just wanted help. I, I needed help. I wanted help. I, I was at the end of the end of the end. <laughs> and then out of nowhere, this Aboriginal came into my life. And we prayed. And I wept. And I wept. And I wept, and I wept, and I wept. I wept for years. <laughs> you know that? I wept and I wept. But I know he is. And I know that he attends. Hey. Eh? I know that he will come down. And he did. He came down that day to deliver me. The Spirit of God entered me, came within me and upon me. And now the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the broken hearted. Hey? To bind up the wounds of those who are oppressed by the evil one. Spirit of the Lord, where would we be without the Spirit of the Lord? Luke 4, 18, isn't it? Luke 4, 18. He has anointed me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, recovery of sight to the blind, 
to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. Hallelujah. Common ground wants no conflict, no battle, no hardship, no enemies, no rejection, no slander, and no financial difficulties. As one minister said to me over 25 years ago, he said, look, Paul, you're going to have a hard time. You need to get with an organisation and uh, many hands make light work and otherwise it's going to be very hard for you on your own. <laughs> I'm not on my own. I got Father and Son and Holy Ghost, angels and brethren and the Word of God. I got it all. Let's press on. I'll pray for you and you pray for me. Hey? We got it all in the I Am. Common ground uh, is everyone's friend. Common ground is not holy ground. Some of the biggest names in in uh, church, religious, denominational history and ministry uh, have stood on that common ground. They will not enter the kingdom. But it gets people in, doesn't it? It grows religion, man-made religion, common ground, compromise, lukewarmness. Common ground, I'll finish up. Common ground, as I said in my book in Discerning the Time, 1997. Common ground says, forget about judgment, forget about hell, be a nice person, Forget about repentance, forget about obedience, don't hurt anyone, enjoy everyday life. Common ground is the wide road of ease and leads to destruction. Eternal, ongoing torment. Right? Common ground. You know, the only thing I really truly have in common with my wife and children and, and, and congregation and people, if I have anything truly lasting in common, it is the Word of God. It is Jesus. Now, if we don't agree on that, we can't walk together. And that will never be. We'll never walk together. <laughs> hey, they're my brother. They're my sister and they're my mother who hear the word of God and do it. And everyone said, Amen. <laughs>